Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on another video. Today I'm going to be running through the trading platform Webull. It's an exceptional platform, one that I recommend that everyone should try. It's basically the best one that I've seen since Think or Swim's platform many years ago. Their development team is working extensively hard to provide exceptional features within the platform. Although the full capacity of the trading platform is only available to American traders and Chinese traders, that doesn't mean you can't still take benefit of the platform. Anyone else is able to download the platform and use it as well. You're just not gonna be able to place trades and see portfolio kind of information. The version four beta is currently only available for Windows and OS X platforms. This can be downloaded below. Feel free to do that and you can follow along with today's video. I'm basically just gonna go through the whole platform and showcase all the features. I'll run through some of the terminology as well, explaining certain sections that might not be clear to the, the average investor or someone who's just starting. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to continue to be alerted when I have new videos out, that would be greatly appreciated if you hit that subscribe button. All right, let's head over to the platform now and I'll run you through the basic functionality of the platform. Once you open Webull, you'll see something very similar to this. Yours will probably be white. I'll go into depth later on as to how you can change that to the darker version. Let's start off on the first page. This is the, the watch lists. And up the top we can see we've got multiple watch lists. For the purpose of this video, we'll be just going through my watch list, not my portfolios. The first column item we have is symbol. This is the company stock code. Then we have the name of the company and a spark line, which is a basic trend pattern for the previous day's trading session. So the US market has closed. So this is basically the last trading day that has occurred. And for Apple, it was negative. This chart represents basically the trending pattern for the day's trade. And it, the color indicates whether or not it was higher than its previous day's trading session. In this case, it was lower. So the, the trend is red. Okay, we have the last price for the previous trading session for Apple at $373.01. This was a change of $6.23 and that was negative. So it was less than the previous trading session. And this is about 1.64% negative. We've got the previous close. So this was the, the day before the last trading session at $379.24 and for the most current trading session, we saw it open at 377 and 47 cents with the high of 378 and 20 cents with a low in that session of 372.99 cents. Now, something that you might not be aware of is that there are an after hours and a pre-market trading session. So this is a current trading session at the moment, which is a period of a few hours after the markets have closed. Then there's a period of time prior to the market opening where trades can be placed then as well. So we can see that it's up 0.45% in after hours trading to 374.69 cents. Okay, heading across the volume. So the volume is the amount of shares traded in that trading session. Almost 26 million in volume of stocks traded. This is a lot lower than the average volume over a three month period at 34.62 million. We've got the percentage range here as well. Market cap. Market cap is basically current stock price multiplied by the amount of shares on offer from the company. And that gives you a market capitalization of $1.62 trillion for Apple. PE is the, the share price multiplied by the earnings per share. And the TTM stands for trailing 12 months. Apple provides a dividend of $3.28. Earnings per share is $11.89. And we have a dividend yield of 0.88%. Not a lot but you will receive that dividend from Apple. It's not a lot of dividend, but with Apple, you would probably be looking at growth instead of dividend yield anyway. Percentage turnover relates to how quickly a company can collect its accounts receivable or how quickly it can get rid of its inventory. We've got the 52 week high price. So this indicates that in the year period, 399 and 82 cents was the highest Apple 
got to. And then in that same period, we had the low of $192.58. Trades on the NASDAQ. And we have some extra columns here that will relate more towards managed funds and ETF. And that's the return year to date, inception date, and the rating. And the rating refers to the Morningstar rating. If you'd like to customize these columns, you can do so by clicking this little option here. And we can see all the items that we have selected. We can also see them broken down into category and I have a few turned off for commodities and Forex because that's something I'm not currently trading. And you can see mutual funds has the rating and then the ETF here as well. Let's head over to the stock section. All right, and let's choose AMD. Just in the left-hand panel here, we've got our watch list. We can see the company name, we can see the current price and the movement in the last trading session. We can also see the after for companies that will trade in that after after market session as well. Moving along here, we've got the chart section and we've got the options chain section. I won't go into the options in this video. It's a bit of a complex topic, but just know it's there for those people that would utilize it. Focusing on the chart section here, we've got indicators here. We've got a little simple list here, which we can quickly add our indicators like MACD or Bollinger Bands. Quickly turn those on and off and also see all of them and add them quickly as well. Do this little section it's pretty handy also got some drawing tools we can quickly draw trend lines as well as fibonacci retracements as well let's change the range so we can go to it like a year a year to date so that's first of january to today's date yep pretty standard stuff down the bottom, you can also change the colors and you can change the, the stroke and whether it's dashed or dotted lines as well, you can lock it and delete it as well. Down the bottom, we've got our range. So we can change it to a one day chart, five day chart, three months. You can change intervals as well. Daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. Pretty standard stuff. In the next panel, we've got our order entries. As I don't have an actual account with Webull, I can't see anything here. News, financials. Financials are awesome. So we've got income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. Down here, we've got the net income for our income statement. We can see the we can see our net income is in millions as well in US dollars, and then we've got the year on year percentage. We can change this from quarterly to annual. And we've got a lovely graph here that will break it down for us. And we can see a lot of growth here for AMD. Balance sheet, same sort of thing. Cash flow, once again. Analyst view is pretty handy to be able to see what all the analysts are thinking. Uh, we've got four analysts here that are saying pretty much just hold on AMD. And we've got a breakdown of the price targets as well. Order flow, we can see the large, medium, and small orders here. The small orders are the lowest 25% of orders and the largest being the largest 25% of orders with the medium being the other 50%. Corporate actions, you can see dividends, upcoming dividends, the splits, and insider activity as well. Offices that are selling stocks or buying stocks. Um, news releases. So these are official releases from the company and we've got the standard profile giving some information about the company. Moving on, we've got the quotes section here, basically giving similar prices to what we saw before and some key statistics here with deeper information for that. Oops. Okay, we've got level one bid and ask prices. This will be generated when the markets are open. Level two is currently not available as I don't have an account. And we've got the volume analysis as well. So these are the pricings that come through. If you were to place trades on this platform, so you're an American or a Chinese trader, this is where you would do it. This is where you place your orders and you can monitor your orders that are open and your actual active positions as well. Okay, moving on to the market section. This is part of the version four updates. A lot of cool things going on here. I'll run quickly through them. So we've got the Dow Jones ETFs and they're all compared here in this nice handy chart. Net inflow, 
advances and decliners as well. So we can see in the last trading day, there were more decliners than advances. So that creates a, a negative day for the markets. Going across here, we've got the global index, quickly shows how the world is trading and as well as currencies here in the Forex section. We've got some basic news and then we've got a whole heap of broken down filters for various items. So we've got top stocks, we've got 52 week highs, calendar announcements, we've got IPO announcements. You'll all you'll find all of that information here. Another new feature for version four, we've got the heat maps here. This is a really cool way to see a topical view of how a sector or even your personal watch list is performing in relation to the other companies in its in its sector or just in the portfolio. We've also got industry breakdowns as well over here, which is a lot, lot cleaner for more detailed information than the heat maps. Okay, moving along to the screener section. A stock screener basically filters all of the companies that a platform or a broking house has at, on their books and allows you to filter them by various constraints. You can then focus on creating a certain strategy in relation to that criteria. For example, you might be looking for companies that have a high PE. You can then see that you've got, you know, 10 companies that fit your criteria for your strategy instead of 500. And that allows you to save time and research. So stock screeners can be quite powerful once you've got a, a decent strategy set up. Clicking filters, you get a whole heap of options here and then you can kind of customize those as well. And I've pre-set up one just to make it nice and easy and we've got 258 matches. If I restrain some of my conditions, that should go down and we've knocked it down to 142 matches. We can then create a watch list from that. They have some simple samples as well that you can look at. So high dividend yield bank stocks, double click on that. That'll load the banks in and then you can create a watch list from that. Pretty handy and something worth setting up. We've got themes as well here, uh, normal stock trading layout or a day trading layout. You can also create your own. Another draw card of version four is the ability to completely customize your your layout you're utilizing widgets to create various elements how you want them to look or how much priority you'd like to give them in relation to your screen space the account section here so this is where chinese and us customers can go to sign up and open an account for everyone else you have access to the paper trading section so this will give you the opportunity to really finesse uh, maybe a trading strategy or some ideas you're working on or you just want to give trading a go and just too scared to use real money at that point. That's totally cool. This is what you'll use paper trading for. We can see we've got support.com up in here. We've got the charts, very similar to our other sections. These widgets are you know utilized throughout the platform. You can customize it exactly how you want to. These are some positions that I played with yesterday that I've just thrown in and this is where you place the orders always just single click on these and then you can place the trades here if you want to customize how you want the platform to look like you can save it here and you can add widgets from this little section here whole heap of little widgets to play with down here we've got the learning section which pretty much just covers the new features of version four. Ultimately, I'd imagine they'll be putting in stock investing, little tutorials in here as well. The support feedback section is excellent. If you have a suggestion for a feature or you're just a bit confused about how things are working, just drop it, drop them a line in here. They'll respond very quickly. Usually within an hour or so is when I get a response back, but yeah, not very long at all. Cancel that. And finally is our settings section. So this is where I change the platform theme color from the standard white to the darker version. I just feel that the darker version provides a, a nicer look and it's easier on the eyes, especially if you're gonna be looking at this platform a lot. You can also reverse the colors for your trend lines as well. If you are shorting the market, you probably want the green down arrow and the red up. We've got also trading settings that you can really customize your orders to have a specific de default. If you're trading options, you might want this quantity to always be 100. Account and security, so this is where you can add in two-factor authentication. And the final thing, if you click alerts, 
This is where you can put in specific alerts based on specific criteria for a company. So let's, for example, add in Tesla and we're going to have once per day and we want to know when it has a sharp fall. Okay, save it. There you go. So you'll get alerted messages up here, the indicator up here to let you know you've got a new alert message. And that'll also roll across to the Webull app on your mobile phone, providing you're using the same email account. So whilst I don't have an account, I am still signed in using my Google account. So that way I still get my watch list come across. The only thing that's missing from it that I absolutely love in the mobile app is the simulated holdings. So that allows me to put in all my transactional data for the stocks that I have in my portfolios. And it allows me to track them as though I had those stocks invested with Webull. Thanks everyone for sticking around to the end. I hope I've been able to provide you some insight into investing and using Webull's trading platform. And if you are using it at the moment, please let me know. I'd love to know your thoughts on the platform. If you have any further questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. See you guys on the next video. Thanks a lot. See you guys.